In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to run a simple risk analysis on a project using Deltek Acumen Risk, and then I'm going to show you how to interpret the risk exposure chart. Very quickly though, let's just look at what is allowing the Monte Carlo risk analysis to adjust activity durations and what their ranges might be. There's two things at play here. In Deltek Acumen, we have duration uncertainty, which allows us to put a range of uncertainty. In other words, set the range for an activity or a group of activities. And if we want to understand what that range is, we can look at this uncertainty button here. Let's click on here, which opens the uncertainty factor dialog. And we can edit them here. In fact, we can increase or decrease the, the range of uncertainty which effectively increases or decreases the range of possible duration changes we can allow the Monte Carlo analysis to apply to any one activity or group of activities. And you can see here, if we look at the extremely conservative, this activity could be anywhere from its original duration, which is set as the most likely and indeed is the max here, to one quarter of its original size, 25%. The, the extremely aggressive says the activity will not shrink below 100% and could have a 175% increase in its duration. So that's how the duration uncertainty tool allows the Monte Carlo to process activities with a set range of possible duration values. Let's also take a look at the risk register. If I go to the left panel here and say risk register, we can see that real, real quick. This is a list of potential risks that might occur on the project. And we're allowed here to say that there's a probability level of that occurring. So in this case, let's say we chose medium. It's 25 to 50% chance that that will occur during the project life cycle. If we go to this schedule button here and take a look, we can see the impact. We can have a 20 day, something as low as 20 days. So the algorithm would be allowed to increase the, the activity up to 20 days if this occurred. Or if we went with a medium, which is 80 days, that does allow quite a, quite a range of change on those. And some of these are very high. You can see we've got some here that are way up there. 120 day increase. If that is a low chance of it occurring, but if it does, it has a high impact on the project. And we can also say what that cost might also be. That's a risk register. Those two work together. If we, if we return to the activity view for a moment, those two work together on the schedule during the Monte Carlo risk analysis to help us determine when the project might finish. So I'm going to run an analysis now. Let's click on this drop down. I'm going to go with uncertainty and risk events. So it's using both the uncertainty factors and the risk events during its analysis. So this should give us a fairly wide range of dates and durations for these activities to be randomized to. I can run this process. There's going to be a thousand iterations and I can run this process by clicking the upper half of that button. And you can see there it's running the different iterations very quickly. And now we're seeing a graph actually for the activity I had uh, for the group of activities, the WBS I had selected this. So I'm going to go up to the top of the project and we'll talk to keep it simple. We'll talk about this in terms of the project. Now, that's a very wide range of dates and that is not a good outcome. With with that risk register and the and the duration uncertainty that we have already, we have only a 10 percent chance of hitting our project scheduled finish date, which is 1020. The deterministic date is 10-20 of 2023. We have some other interesting statistics in this table below the chart. We have a mean of P54, and that's telling me that we have about a 54% chance of this project finishing on February 10th of 2024. Best case scenario, 9-8 of 2023. That's when the earliest dates might have occurred during the Monte Carlo simulation. And if we go down to worst case, we can see that that would be 12, 13 of 2024. That's 
462 day range. That's very high. So with the risk register and with the risk uncertainty values in there, this project isn't looking very good for the date that we are hoping to finish on. I'm going to make a change now. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go with uncertainty only and run the risk analysis again. And again, with the top of the project highlighted, because note, it will show a chart for the items I have selected here. And again, we've got this bell curve. Let's explain this chart a little better now. The histogram shows how many hits or times an iteration put the end of the project on a particular date. And that's in weekly buckets at the moment. So we can see the tallest one there. That is showing us that 204 hits occurred somewhere around 10 15 of 2023 we have a cumulative line also so as the hits build up we get an s curve and so if this was biasing towards earlier dates the s curve would be steeper to start with uh, and if it was biasing towards later dates based on our risk register and our uncertainty we'd see the s curve uh, starting off at a more gentle curve and going up more more rapidly towards the back end of the date ranges. Now let's look at the deterministic value in the table below. That is telling us 68% chance of finishing on 10 20 of 2023. We, the next one we see is mean P51 that says we have about a 51% chance of finishing on 1015 of 2023. So this is looking a lot better than it did before, but we may still be a little too aggressive on some of these elements here. I'm going to pull these into more towards realistic and see if that helps our graph when we run yet another risk analysis. And indeed, that's very good. That has been helpful. Our deterministic is now 98% chance of hitting the 10, 20 date. So that's very much within the kind of range we'd be looking for. So when I'm doing risk analysis, I'm looking at understanding when, based on multiple iterations, when my project might finish, uh, what are the chances of finishing on those dates, and you know, giving me a range of, of dates on which I may finish but of course we're going to try and manage it to the date in this case 1020 of 2023 a couple of other things about this chart while we're looking at it we can add our own p values we we have a p0 a p50 uh, we've got a p80 in there that's been added by us or p75 how those get added is we place the cursor on the chart and you can see where there's an intersection between that horizontal and vertical line it, it, it is it is intersecting along the cumulative line there so if we wanted to get a 90 a p90 value we move it up to the 90 percent and click on it and now i can add the p90 value right there and if i look down at the bottom there's p90 now added in and it's telling me about a 90 percent chance of hitting 10 9 of 2023 to remove that, I just sort of reverse the process, hover over that, click on it again, and then it says add remove. That will actually remove it from the chart. So if I didn't want the P80, I could also remove him and get it back to its standard 50, 75, and 100% worst case. And the range, of course, has dropped. That means that when the Monte Carlo simulation happened, we had end dates for the project falling across a range of 87 days. Anyway, I hope that helps your understanding of the Deltec Acumen Risk Exposure Chart and what it is telling us about our project after Monte Carlo Risk Analysis.